of the and person we're gonna and thinking of what you want out of the person i'm sorry Trying to get the buy icon. <laughs> it's not coming up. That's right there. Just trying to get to the the camera part. Edit meeting. Great. So hello, everybody. Uh, today is uh, Monday, and we're in the month of December. And I happen to be here with Arthur Mendoza. Uh, he a little bit about Arthur Mendoza. He earned his BA from the University of California in Riverside and his MFA at the University of California of San Diego. Uh, he also studied under the guidance of Alan Schneider, who is actually originally from Juilliard. And Alan Schneider actually introduced Arthur Mendoza to Stella Adler, who's one of the great icons when it comes to the process of acting and which uh, came from Stanislavski. She was one of the original, I guess she handed down that valuable information from Stanislavski. And Arthur's worked with so many working actors. We're so lucky to have him here today, uh, broadcasting on Facebook. He actually is the director and teacher at the Actor Circle Theater which is in Santa Monica. And he runs a class on Wednesday night from six to 10, seven to 10. And so if you guys want to check out an amazing class where you can learn a lot, not just about acting, writing, directing in the industry, uh, he's got a plethora of knowledge. He's worked with um, so many working actors like Finola Hughes, uh, Branford Marsalis, Deidre Hall, John Jobson, Selma Hayek, Benicio del Toro, and so many more, the list goes on and on. So we're here with Arthur today and we're titling this, uh, this Facebook Live is titled, uh, The Actor Breaks the Rules. And we're gonna talk a little bit today about some things you can do if you actually want to become, let's not say great, but a real human actor that works all the time. And, um, the first thing that we're going to talk about, and uh, and I know this is one of Arthur's favorites, is having a black, blank slate. Like, why do you prefer to work with people that don't have any experience in acting and that are coming with a completely blank slate? 
they don't have bad habits. Someone hasn't told them that sitting in a corner repeating over and over. Someone hasn't told them to run around on the floor and making noise to touch sound. Some of the crazy things that people ask actors to do. One actor was asked to scream at a girl in the corner and it broke her down and it made, he, he left. And he came back to my class and he sat next to me, he kept just staring at me. I said, what are you looking at? He said, you're not real. He said, yeah, I am. Can I be in your class? Well, if you stop staring at me, you can come back. Right. And I adored him because he's one of those, I like, I like people who are freaks. I like people who aren't understood by other people because that's what I am. That's why we close the door in the theater because I have a, we're a room full of freaks. Nobody says, okay, I'm going to go to work and be somebody else. You know, that's not normal. We're not normal. And someone who hasn't ever studied has no bad habits. And then I don't have to deal with somebody else, their, their words. And that's the good thing. I, um, I like people who are open and don't have any bad habits yet. Because otherwise, I guess, then you have to untrain what they've uh, done. Yeah, undo, yeah. And it's, and, it's, and it's horrendous because in their brain, they're constantly thinking of that other thing. And actors get confused because what they want to do is right now. They want to get the thing right now that they can use tomorrow. You know, the call reading, get the job. Do actors think that they get jobs and become actors by doing scenes? Yeah. It's useless. Scenes are useless unless you know what you're doing. You know, it's like um, start running and then let's do a running marathon. You know, you can't do that. <laughs> actors want to run marathons right away. Yeah. And they want the, they want the medal. They want the, they want the golden ticket. It's crazy. Yeah. So, um, you know, a, a lot of people come to Hollywood they come out here and they want to, they want to work and, you know, they're trying to find the right way and they're trying to do it perfect. And they've been, Ugh. they've been taught if they can learn the words and prepare up the wazoo and, and make it perfect. Uh, talk about why you feel like actors need to break the rules. They have to find the avenue of their rules. Stella has a technique, a basis, a foundation that gives you the growth through the imagination to become your own actor. I don't want cookie cutter actors. I don't want them all to be the same. Everybody has to learn in their own way and experience the technique and experience those, those uh, sequences of growth and to watch them all do it in different ways, to see the obstructions fall away, to see the fear fall away. That's exciting for me. For them to trust me in order to guide them through these exercises into their talent, into their individual talent. The technique unleashes the individual experience, nothing personal, the experience through the imagination. Look at all these movies that are coming out with all these fantastical places. Yeah. Who's going to go there? Thank God they're doing them. These places that don't exist with names I can't pronounce. Yeah. <laughs> they're amazing with frogs that turn into trees and turn into rabbits. And <laughs> it's just, it's amazing. Right. Get on the Zeban Zebanese. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. I want to follow those. Yeah. You know? And I want to follow the other ones who take us in in these extraordinary rides. I saw one of the best movies that I have seen in a very long time. And that's a black guy and a white guy going through the South. And it's called The Green Book. It is an amazing movie. It is, it is acting and the black man has style and he, he is the king and he's in the back seat and this white guy's driving him around. 
and you see the conflict. He, he lives above Carnegie Hall with these beautiful gowns and implicit, meticulous suits. Yeah. And he sits in the heat with these meticulous suits. There's the scene where the, the white guy gets chicken and he's eating it. And he says, you want some? He says, no, 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 come on. No, no, no. You got this beautiful, no, come on. What? And then he takes it like this and he looks like, it looks like he's taking a, a, a porcelain. He said, what do I do with it? He said, you just eat it. And he eats it and, he said, and it's good. And he said, well, I'm done with it. What do I do? Throw it outside. What do you mean throw it outside? Just throw it outside. He threw his bones outside and he did it. It was so freeing to throw the bone outside, you know? Yeah. But then he threw the, 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 the Coke thing and he stopped. They didn't go back and get it. Don't, you don't throw the Coke thing. It won't go back to nature. It was brilliant. Yeah. That movie is brilliant and brilliant and brilliant. Those actors are amazing. I get bored so fast. I go to movies and I'm twitching and moving. That's why it's not good to go see movies with me. Because if it's not good, you're going to get twitching and go, oh, uh, uh, yeah, that's what I do. You know, I'm twitching and moving. And, oh, my God. So I, I, it's not good to go to movies. you got to go to a movie that there's a 50-50 chance they're going to like it because I'll make a lot of noise, you know? Yeah. Uh, but that movie, oh, I didn't want it to be over. And then at the end, I didn't want it to end that way. I didn't want them to separate. I love that movie with all my heart. Those two men are amazing. Maybe talk about, um, you know, what, what makes an interesting performance or an interesting movie. I know that, you know, perfection isn't human. No, no. So if you could talk a little bit about it doesn't some, exist. Some it doesn't human exist. Elements. It doesn't exist. Yeah. Perfection doesn't exist. You can't do something perfect. You can do it good. You can do it well for that moment. And the moment you stop, you're going to be different the next moment. You can't hold those performances. You can't hold those moments because you squeeze them dry. You go to the same place and you release. You go to the same place and you release. You see the, you see the images, you do the same thing, and you leave. Stella used to tell me, Arthur, Arthur, you've got to look at your plate. And I had a plate of food. She said, turn it. Okay, turn it again. I turn it. So sometimes you can start from the peas. Sometimes you can start from the potato. Sometimes you can start with the meat. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. But every time you turn your plate, it's going to be different. Look at your plate differently, Arthur. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, Miss Adler. And I had no idea what she was talking about. Half of the stuff she told me, I didn't understand until I'm teaching all of you now. There are moments I sit in class and I go, that's what she was saying. This woman knew I was going to teach. Yeah. This woman told me I was going to have a theater. I said, no, I don't want to teach. And I'll never have a theater. I didn't want it. I didn't want to teach. I thought, I thought that losers teach. Teaching, acting. I don't want to be that. I didn't know that it was going to ignite me. I didn't know a theater was going to change my life. Yeah. I didn't know how that was. And I didn't know how to change my life. I had to learn how to shut up and hang on. She said, don't ever call the theater Arthur Mendoza anything. I said, all right, you want me to have a theater and it can't be my name. How are people going to find me? And she laughed and she put her hand on my forehead. and said, they'll find you, darling. The ones that are supposed to find you will find you. And hell, if she wasn't right, I wish some more would find me, but I got, I got plenty. I got interesting ones. Yeah. Yeah, I got, I got, <laughs> I got interesting rock hard granite that turns into, I keep shaving it for it to be a, a diamond. All of them I want, I want all these diamonds in the, in the rock. <laughs> Maybe, uh, Talk about why an actor going after something to do a good job can be can or constrict its flow. Awful, awful. Yeah. You can't go do a good job. You can't. I'm going to get vulgar. It's like making love with someone. Hey, hey is, is this good? Are you having fun? Is this the best you've ever had? Am I doing the right thing? What the fuck? You can't do that. Yeah. You're there. Settle in. Try some stuff. But you can't, <laughs> yeah, you, got, you can't get, what well, am I doing? Is that, you know, this is the best you ever had. It's like, what the hell? Yeah. 
How can you do that? You can't go in, I'm going to knock it out of the park. You know, Jason Manoa, we did his audition for Game of Thrones. He called me, he said, I got it. I said, what? They sent everybody away. I got it. They're waiting for my manager. We're going to do some stuff. I said, well, that's good. Isn't that good? Yeah. Well, why aren't you happy? He said, I don't know. <laughs> I, didn't know I didn't know how to get a part. Right. I, I said, your life will change yeah. for the rest of your life from the freedom, from the freedom you gave them in Game of Thrones. He's a wonderful actor. He's powerful and he's scary and he's dominant. And he doesn't fit. He came to take me to lunch. It was raining. And he had a, a, a hat like Raiders of the Art. And he can't wear coats because he's too big. So he had this big Indian blanket. And this is an area where my brother lives. It's a real white and it, a nice little, you know, nickels little place. And he walks in with this big and this voice. And he, she said, honey, there'll be two. Me and him. And everybody looked at They held their handbags. This guy got to... And she said, well, it'll be 20 minutes. No, we're going to go somewhere else. And you hear the voice and he walked out. He said, all right. I said, yeah, we'll go over here. And he took up a whole booth yeah. with his arms. Yeah. And we talked some things over. He's definitely a big guy. I adore him. Yeah. I adore him. And I adore him because he's fearless. I adore him because he's fearless. Yeah. And he doesn't question himself. Neither does Benicia. They're wild. And people go, what am I going to do with them? Just stay out of their way. Let them do their work. Yeah. Do the, is that okay? Was that okay? Then you can tell them later. But you've got to have the freedom. You've got to have the, you can't have the restriction in your creativity. When an actor approaches the scene or their work, mm -hmm. what are, what's, what's a way for them to really just let, let the flow? And Don't look at the word. Yeah. Don't look at the words. Look at what's going on in the scene. You're going to have the piece of paper in your audition. You know, they say they need, I don't know, whatever you need. Do not memorize it because you'll kill it. You don't say know that it. again. Do not memorize the audition. Because you'll kill it. Not in a good way. No, not in a good way. <laughs> you'll do the words perfect. You'll do the words perfect. You'll do the words perfect. Oh, and then you're, you're thinking of words. You, you got that in high you? You got the paper. Yeah. Learn it. Learn some of it. Learn the sequence. Learn what's going on in the scene. Le learn what's going on in the scene. Uh, Stella has a, a wonderful exercise to chat, to argue, to discuss, to fight. What are they doing? Is someone fighting? The dialogue will tell you. Yeah. You have a technique. Pick it out. Is there a description? <laughs> Is it a reminisce? You won't have a reminisce. They don't do those anymore. Actors can't do them. They just do voiceovers. Talk about when they approach a the scene or the work as far as um, the process. What are some ways you've seen actors break the rules, like outside the norm? Because obviously, if everyone's doing it the same way, nothing's okay. different. Let me so, tell you something stupid. Yeah. I auditioned for a part. And the scene had to do with me grabbing the character's earring in the scene. So I was doing this and the girl backed up because people had kept pulling her earring off. Yeah. They did it with you. don't do that. You don't touch the person. You're auditioning. It's make believe. They'll have the real earring and blood when you do it. Don't be stupid. Yeah. And guys have to do something different, you know? One guy used to take off his shirt all the time. And I told him, you know what? That's a good idea because it seems to me that's all you've got. Yeah. Stop doing it. You're a blonde fit man. You look like a hooker when you do that. Yeah. You look cheap. Perhaps you can talk a little about about some of the films that you've seen um, where people, you know, the key is to really value your own authenticity more so like, for example, you look at Shakespeare and everyone's like, oh, uh, it's got to be proper. It's got to come off like see, this. And this is something that uh, it's unfair. Yeah. There was this there was a uh, a TV series. And it was absolutely authentic. It was about Shakespeare in his time. 
It was dirty and bloody. The, the, you know, England's a dirty place. Yeah. And, you know, they come out doing all the world. Is and it's like, and then we start trying to do it. You can't do that. Let them do it that way. You can't do it. Yeah. And they didn't talk the way they talk now. They did. It was a diseased, dirty time. Yeah. And they do it in Shakespeare, this miniseries. They do it exactly, damn close, damn close. It was wet and dirty and diseased and fucking and whoring. It was all there. Yeah. Shakespeare had an affair. And it's in there. He had a child. He had children with a woman. Yeah. It's there. It showed how the plays were written to reflect the time. It's not royal. It is meant to be done. It's meant to be given. We can do it. Yep. I have experienced in the last two years a boy in my class who can kick the shit out of it better than any student I've ever had. And you know what? He doesn't really know it. He just loves it. Yep. And I have seen him work absolutely egoless on Hamlet. I get through Hamlet and did it. And he knocked it out of the park. Henry V, knocked it again. He just goes in and eats it. But what are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking about the fact that he loves it. Like he's, he does it for the joy. He the loves joy. it. I feel like, I feel like I passed it on to him. Yeah. And I did, no one's ever loved it like that. Yeah. No one. And he, well, I'll be going home and he's asking me questions about it. Well, you asked me, you said I could do Henry Hoy, which speech? He, I said, there's a ham. Well, I don't want to do ham. I've already done those speeches. I don't want to go backwards. Okay, what do you want to do? He's hungry. He's hungry. He's yeah. hungry. Yeah. You know, um, he and his girlfriend I adore. And I have so many books. And I had this entire, it was a gift from a very dear friend. He gave me the entire canon of Shakespeare, all of them. So one day we're, I said, here, take them. What are we doing? I said, take them home, they're yours. He's been going through, I see, bring them to help. He's been eating them. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I have infected him with something that is going to bring joy to him for the rest of his life. Yeah. And he's got it and he, and he loves it. And he's eating it the right way. Maybe talk about how he brings his love to it and, and, why actors should value their authentic self more than something outside of themselves or trying to be something else? Well, because it's built to kill us. Yeah. The most horrific thing in our industry is the comparing of one actor to another. The Academy Awards. How can you compare? You know, uh, George C. Scott said, I don't want this. If we all did the same part and we could see who did more, then we could do, I don't want this. You can't compare people. Yep. You can't compare artistry. You cannot compare it. And all we do is put that burden on ourselves. Yeah. Of, oh, uh, I've got to go for that. I got to go for that, that, that carrot. Right. We're not seals and we don't jump for fish. Right. Yeah, I think the comparing gets dangerous all throughout life. But it starts yeah. immediately. Yep. I see these kids come in their face of anxiety of wanting to be these actors. Yeah. I got one kid that wants to be Brando. I want to slap him in the head. And he tells me he doesn't want to say you're lying. Right. Stella said when she saw Streetcar. She said they're going to be scratching and burping for the rest of the American theater. Yep. That was one character. That wasn't a technique of acting. It was truthful. It was brilliant. It was one character. The world had never seen that. So then all of a sudden, the play was truth. Stanley Kowalski was truth. Right. And there we go. Speaking of Brando and how he brought that to the role, um, you had talked before about punctuation 
mm -hmm. and words uh, along the lines of someone trying to be perfect and get, get it right. Talk about uh, punctuation and Shakespeare. Take the goddamn punctuation out. Yeah. Take it out. You know, take it out. See if it works. It's not. It's not done for actors. Yeah. It's done for class. Yeah. For six day to nine day. So you won't. You won't. You got. Know, I got. You will just read the whole thing. Punctuation is not for us. Take it out. See if it doesn't work. Yeah. We're limited sometimes by the punctuation. The punctuation is not put for you to act. It wasn't put for you to, to experience anything but the word in idea. Punctuation is for you to express and internalize the word by idea, yeah. not by expression. All the world's a stage and all the men and women, you can't do that. You're, what, what are you saying? All the world's a stage and all the men and women are married players. We have their entrances, but if we if we do it, we do it. Yeah, I think I think you say that a lot. You you talk a lot about how it's not about the words. Right. When 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 so. when Tennessee Williams said Stella dot 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 Stella dot 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 Stella, <laughs> you know, what is that? Yeah. He said Stella because he wanted his woman. Yeah. He wanted his woman. Yeah. Dot 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 dot. How the hell are you gonna do <laughs> Stella? Stella, dot, I'm gonna have a t-shirt that Stella dot dot dot. Stella. All right, all right, Stella, 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 dot right. dot dot. Right. I've always depended on the kindness of strangers, dot dot dot. The hell are you gonna do with that? You see how stupid that is? You see how stupid is it? Yeah. You're my brother. You're supposed to protect me. You're my brother. You're supposed to protect me. <laughs> dot dot dot. Dot dot. <laughs> you understand that? You see how stupid that is? Yeah. Right. Once more before the breach, dear, the, the, once more before the breach, dear friends. Once more, before, what the hell are you doing with the punctuation? What the hell are you doing with it? Yeah, that's for kids. That's for that's for ninth grade assignments. That's to understand the ideas, the words, not to understand the expression of the characters that are saying those words. From all your experience in acting, would you say that? Uh some of the mistakes that people have made sometimes become the biggest gifts as opposed to it being perfect. Do you, have you seen that through your experience as far as people just not looking at the words, but just letting the energy kind of fill out the... Some of the things. best thing that I learned is because I was lazy and I didn't understand it. Yeah. So I made really big mistakes, but they led me somewhere else. Yeah. And Eric Barr, a brilliant teacher, taught me how to make those mistakes and run with them. And they weren't mistakes. Yeah. I was finding something that was different. Yeah, that's pretty key. So talk about uh, finding something different as far as having, having fun with acting. We were talking about this movie with uh, Jack Black, The House, with a clock for walls and where he plays a warlock and um, he just brings his own playful self to it. Talk we, about- Well, he's way. able, this is a man. Now he's going to be categorized as that. Yeah. He's always going to play that crazy thing. Yeah. See, Robin Williams was shackled by Mark yeah. and he couldn't get away with it. But when he did Dead Poet Society, he said, no, I'm an actor. When he did that other film where he won an Academy Award, Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, Goodwill Hunting. He was amazing. Yeah. There was no more there. No. There was no joke there. This was a man who talked to a kid who was broken and they were broken the same way and he could help him. Yeah. And he said, Go get the girl. And you saw him leave. He was beyond magnificent. Yeah. Beyond magnificent, because opportunity met talent, and he was strong enough to stop, stop laughing. Yeah. He, he, he um, well, even like Jim Carrey too. I mean, there's a lot of people that come from comedy, and obviously, a lot of those comedians take that from their pain and 
infuse it into their comedy. But mm. some of those actors are like Jim Carrey and well, they're not. Robin they're Williams. not some and, like I don't the know serious if, bits they do. Is I like, don't know if Jim Carrey's ever been given the opportunity. A. Yeah. I don't know if he's ever wanted it. B. But I think there's something very large behind him, and I don't know if he'll ever discover it. I don't know if he wants to. Yeah. But. Uh, the boy, I don't remember his name, he died, who played uh, the Joker. Oh, Heath Ledger? Yeah, I think, and I don't think it was the Joker. I think his, his enormous talent woke him up. And the Joker did something to him that allowed him to break through. But see, it wasn't the Joker. It was his psyche that went to places and opened doors yeah. that he hadn't comfortably opened before. So through those portals came the Joker. Through the portals came insanity. Right. Through the, those portals became need for things. I don't know what he used, but he needed something to shut all that down. And he used the wrong things. So as actors, how do we cope with some of those places that we go to that wake us up or jolt us into another, uh, you know, paradigm or another zone? You grow up. Yeah. I, I, I did Romeo and Juliet and never wanted to go home and stab anybody. Yeah. You know, come on. Yep. It's a job. Yep. It's acting. Yes, you use all of that talent, but if you're done, you're done. Go home. Go have a beer. Go have a life. Right. Come back tomorrow. It's not that big a deal. Yeah. It's not like, oh my God, I can never leave that character. You know that that story of of uh, Sir Lawrence Olivier and uh, Dustin Hoffman. They were doing a movie together, and Lawrence Olivier was reading a paper and having tea. Dustin came in and said, "Hello, Dustin." He's like, "I've been up for five days." I mean, you know, preparing for the character. You should try acting. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them really live it. I don't know. I, I'm not one to judge anyone that doesn't work for me. Yeah. And I don't promote that within the people I train. It's acting. It's yeah. a job. Yeah. It's a great job. Yeah. Get over it. Yeah. Go home, change your clothes, leave the stuff there. And if you do get into those places, stop it. Yeah. Don't act because you'll go crazy. You'll go crazy. Yeah. You play Medea, you're going to want to kill some kids. I mean, what? this is stupid. Right. It's stupid. You don't get lost in the care. It's your job. It's your job. Take a shower, shake it off, take the costumes off. You got to do it seven times a day on Broadway. This one actor, brilliant actor, did a movie and they hired him to do a play on Broadway. He said, you, you have to memorize all the lines and say, you know, I kept getting notes from the, you've got to use the right words. Yep. And the stage manager kept in the, you missed, you missed the, you missed when. I had to go through, he was, he was astonished. Astonished. Yeah. Yeah. There's no second take, baby. There's no second take. It's one shot, one ride, run right out there. Jump off. Yep. It's one of the best things. When I was at La Jolla, we did. It's so funny because I have a long coat that I wear up, and it's um for rain. And I keep moving the bottom and holding it. I holding it like my old costume. I I keep bringing the costume up so I want it to floor. It's it's instinctual. It, you know those costumes were lovely, and it was wonderful to play in them, and have those great opportunities to play in them with wonderful costumes and wonderful makeup and wigs. Yeah, I mean, it, it's very an, an imaginative place. And uh, I know that's one of the big things that Stella believed in and coming from all the, you know, the core people that were teaching acting back, you know, in the day of Stanislavski. Talk a little bit about realistic versus, you know, Stella Adler versus method and Mem memory versus when, imagination. When when they all came about the group theater, yeah, and the group theater started in, implementing the work that they went back to Tanzanski. 
Some things were mis misunderstood. Stella didn't like it. Stella couldn't, doesn't want to, she didn't want to raise up all that stuff. She couldn't do it. Yeah. I can't, she left. She went to, to Paris, found Stanislavski near his deathbed, went through all of it. And she said, is this what we were so, no, 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 we tried that, it doesn't work. No, 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 that doesn't work. And she said, thank God, Yeah. I can act then. You have to have a technique. Right. You got to, okay, uh, we're going to this, 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 get ready. You know, he puts on certain clothes and shoes for the day. You bring out certain, you know, the technique of the things you're going to use that night. Yeah. But you don't bring all this baggage of your bad childhood or when you were beat at school. Oh my God, there's no room on the stage for that guy. You'd probably be more in your head than actually in the scene. And, uh, hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> and then you'd probably be upset. Right. The hell, I don't want to remember what happened in high school. Yeah. I don't want to go to reunions. High school was something I survived. I survived high school. There were some good things, but I survived it. Yeah. It was, a, I mean, I was always, I've always been weird. You know, I've always been sort of an outcast. God knows how I found a, a place that that was, I could teach there was a job for that, a job for a weirdo. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's normal out there. I don't think, I don't think any of us are normal. I don't think any of us are normal. You're not getting no, you're not, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think anyone's normal. Yeah. I, I, as actors, you have to be interested in fun. Yeah. Acting has to be fun too. It's got to be fun. Yeah, got to be fun. If it's not fun, go drill oil wells, make more money. Yeah, exactly. But you know, it's it's got to be fun. Yeah, you got to be excited to go down these lines. Excited to go down these lines. So uh, along the lines of fun and you know people starting with a no. Good when I mean fun, yeah. it's not jumping. It's fun, a great pleasure within yeah. you to do this. When this student leaves class and he's knocked it out of the park as Hamlet, he feels self-satisfied. Yeah. He feels validated. Yeah. In a way, nothing else can give him that validation. When I tell him, you got it, well done, do it again. And he can do it over and over and over. Because he's going to act in movie over and over. Right. You get to go, okay, this is a magic place. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So coming from pleasure, people are excited about acting. They want a base. They want a foundation. Um, and come out and visit the class, which is on Wednesday night uh -huh. at the Santa Monica Playhouse. Yes. Um, and you have a process for, you know, new actors and a foundation. Talk a little bit about you know, where, where does somebody start when they, when they come okay. and they take class with you? Or Stella they... believed in a, in a philosophy. You must remember where you've been. Yeah. And then you see where you're going. Yeah. I mix all the technique people with the, with the scene study. So everybody's sort of working on their own, but some of the actors are, oh yeah, that's what I did. I have actors that I put in an exercise with the, she, I forgot this stuff. Yeah. And she was stumbling. Because just, just because you've gone through through technique, it doesn't mean you remember to use it. Right. So when I put the advanced people in an exercise, this is a reminder. Oh, remember this? Remember you gotta do that? So it's not about arriving at a destination. No, no, no. But the process that you go through that allows it's you to- It's a process that you're supposed to not only, I mean, I have, I have students that are completely enlivened by these students that are working yeah. at, a, at, at a different level, at a different level. What the fuck's a level? There's no level, there's different places. Yeah. There's, you know, and I, I think that if you do not have a process, yeah. you don't have anything. Yeah. And I think processes make sense. Is everything. Yeah. You know, and it uh, it's hard to. I mean, anybody can get lucky once in a while, but if you don't have a process. How can... This is the city of lucky shots. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. There are people Sometimes who... a little bit of luck can be dangerous because 
it puts you into a pattern where you don't work on a process. Like and you, you know, know and, and no one ever tells you the truth. Right. They don't ever tell you the truth. Yeah. Because they've got a house in in the in, in Tuscany, they gotta pay the rent for. Yeah. So that manager is gonna make sure you keep working. Yeah. So I don't think I don't important. think all managers are like that. That's unfair. But there are too many actors making huge amounts of money that got there. I don't know how. Right. Right. I don't know how. And then you have actresses like Michelle Pfeiffer. All of a sudden, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, whatever she was doing, it worked. Right. So, I mean, yeah. if you want to feel legitimate, I mean, that's something else. But her talent carried her through all that stuff her talent and she needs to uh bravo herself right for fooling a lot of people but she's not fooling a lot of people her talent was was backed by that yeah so i think if people come out and visit your class yes and you know it's a free audit yes and you can come and see the process yes and you know the thing with the process is just like you talked about learning Yes. And you made some big mistakes. Yes. But through the mistakes, you got bigger gifts and bigger yeah. uncoverings. Yeah. So I think I think it's always good to go out to, you know, a class like yours where you're working with actors on different levels. Right. So people can see and what you, they could uncover. And when you join your put at the beginning. Yeah. And you can, oh my, I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing that. And then this is for you you can piece it all together. I have some students that are working on C and you can see their mind working on I forgot that. Right. You forget, and then you do the scene, you're like, I didn't do all that. Where's this and this and this? Yeah. How do I make these props work? How doing in the place? You know? Yeah, I think I think from being in your class and observing the work that goes on, which is amazing, I think a lot of times you even learn more from watching the other people. You know, it's funny because people get all wrapped up in being good and their identity and their ego. But when you actually just drop that and you come and you order the class and you witness work that uncovers itself from not the words, mm -hmm. but from the inside out, then I think that's really what sticks with the people that audit your class mm -hmm. is the genuine flow that comes from a process, not from trying to be good mm -hmm. or trying to knock it out of the park, but actually just letting the inner work and the process. Um, and I, 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 um, I hate that knock it out of the park. In fact, there's, you know, that boy I talked to you about. If you, I sometimes I think, how can I keep complimenting this, this kid? Yeah. About what's that going to do the rest of the class? He says, fuck it, I can't worry about that. This kid is working hard and he's doing really well. How am I not going to say you're doing really well? Yeah. I got to tell him. Right. Because he's doing really, really well. Now we got to another scene in contemporary real, and he's stumbling. Yeah. It's the same actor, but it's not working. He's stumbling. And I'm sure through the stumbling, he's learning a lot. Of course, he rem it gives him humility <laughs> to begin with. Yeah, humility is important. I mean, I guess that's why. Well, there, there, there needs to be. Life a, enough. A, 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 <laughs> you know, a, a, a great dose of humility. Yeah. And compassion when you work. Yeah. That's what makes an artist. Wonderful. Well, we, we just want to thank you for taking the time out and sure. contributing to everybody that's out there on Facebook. If you guys, you know, find anything in this that's interesting that inspires you, come out and audit the class on Wednesday night. Share this with friends or people that you know that are in the industry, whether they're an actor, a director, a writer, somebody that wants to do something with purpose and significance uh, is about understanding the process, not trying to arrive at a destination because just when you get somewhere, you go somewhere else too. So it's uh, it's always about learning and following the process. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So share this and send your comments and thanks everybody for tuning in and have a great night. Happy December. <laughs>